Hello my natural beauties and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be discussing about postpartum depression and anxiety. Yes, it is a topic that is not um, discussed every day or is not discussed when it comes to dealing with postpartum. That's basically what after pregnancy is. I'm sorry if you see me like looking off, it's because I'm looking at my son. He's on the camera and he's currently taking a nap. So I also do have like some notes here that I just did not want to miss. Bear with me. I did not want to miss these notes, so. The first point that I'm going to talk about or discuss, I'm just going to talk about my experience. My experience may be different from the next person, the next person may be different from the next person. So, this is just what I experienced and you may not experience the same thing, you could experience the same thing, you could experience worse. So, this is just my experience and I, alright. So the first point we're going to talk about is once you bring the baby home and you're by yourself, just you, your significant other, your spouse, your partner, whoever. You bring the baby home and y'all are just dealing with the baby by yourself. No nurses, no doctors, nobody, nobody helping you. Thankfully, I had my mother there to help me and that still stuck by my side to help me even though I was going through all these emotions and everything like that. So shout out to her and my husband for like sticking with me through this because baby. Hey, right, let me go ahead and discuss that. So on our way home, bringing our son home for the first day. Um, it was kind of a shocker. Honestly, it was like I was really still in disbelief that I had had a baby. So with that being said, like I was dealing with, um, just readjusting, adjusting when now it's not just us, it's us and the baby. So we brought him home, we're dealing with a schedule, but that's gonna be a whole nother video. All right, so with this, um, bringing him home, it was a total shocker. Like, I did not expect that I would experience postpartum depression or anxiety. More so, I experienced anxiety when it came to um, bringing a baby home and having a baby just in general, like my anxiety was through the roof. I'm just gonna tell you that now. But yeah, um, it is normal. Um, I did have a lactation consultant that she actually, um, you know, helped me through that. She helped me understand, you know, that it is normal. However, like you can seek help to get like therapy sessions and stuff so you can have someone to talk to, which was a good thing. Um, also, another thing that I did get done is I had my placenta um, encapsulated, which means that I had it in um, pill form. She actually um, encapsulated my placenta. I just saved it. i also go over that in a whole nother video too. If y'all want to know about that, just let me know and I'll have a video discussing that portion. I had the tincture. I had like a whole bunch of other things done with my placenta and with the capsules they basically help with like the postpartum depression and anxiety it's your, you know your hormones you're taking your hormones back in because your hormones shift dramatically like my anxiety was through the roof i did not handle sleeping at night i did not sleep well i constantly was checking up on my son trying to make sure he was breathing we did get parenting courses, so we did hear about like, SIDS and purple crying, but more so my fear was SIDS. Like, I am, still am terrified of that. So, actually afraid that I would experience my son experiencing SIDS. And I educated myself on that so much, and it came to the point where I, became terrified that it was just gonna happen. I would always tell my husband, you know, make sure this, make sure that. Like, I was always on his butt about everything. Like, on his butt about everything. I would always tell him like, babe, like, make sure this, make sure that when you lay him down, you lay him down like this. Like, I would be so, my anxiety was through the roof that I would be so afraid for anyone, anyone to watch him without me being around. Like. I would not take a nap, I would not go to sleep. If I did get some sleep, it would be during the daytime and 
probably not even more than an hour or 30 minutes. Any sudden sound, I'm checking, I'm up and I'm checking on like our son. I'm like, hey, is he okay? Is he breathing? Like, what's wrong? Did, did anything happen? But yeah, so back where I left off from, I had to go get my son because he woke up from his dad. Like I said, I did not get no sleep. I stayed up 24 set. Well, I put pretty much all nighters. Sometimes I would only average about maybe three or three hours of sleep, maybe if that. I don't even know, to be honest with you. But like I said, because I wanted to keep an eye on him and make sure everything was good. But hey, got chills. Got chills, people. But yeah, so let's see what else. All right, so another topic that falls under the postpartum depression and anxiety um, would have to be driving with him. Like, I was so afraid to drive with him. From the moment we brought him home that day, even that day I was afraid to drive to come home with him. Like, just to have him in the car, I was afraid. My husband was the one who drove. I was in the back seat with him, obviously. And we stopped to get something to eat after leaving the hospital. When we got home, after that, I was like, yeah, the only time we're gonna go out is if it's for his doctor's appointment or my doctor's appointment, or if I absolutely have to go somewhere and get something. If I have to, I will order it and have it delivered to the house. Let me tell you why that is a huge mistake that I felt, I feel like that was a huge mistake that, I felt that was a huge mistake that I made. And one of the reasons why, let me vouch for myself. One of the reasons, because I bet y'all thinking like, damn girl, like it ain't that serious, like, Damn, I like, live a little. I get that, but you will never understand until you have a kid of your own. And especially I'm a first time mother, so. But anywho, <laughs> I was afraid, and one of the main reasons I was afraid, like I said, was because here in Texas, people do not, I wanna say, do not know how to drive. Like, they absolutely do not know how to drive. Oh my God, it's always an accident here. It's always motorcycle accidents or people just doing crazy stuff. Like, I actually almost got into several accidents while pregnant with him here in Texas driving because either someone had on their blinkers, wasn't turning, and was continuing to come straight, or someone was cutting me off, or I'm getting on the interstate and someone's not letting me onto the interstate. Like, literally, not letting me onto the interstate. So, with that being said, I, yeah, I just, I felt like I was putting my son's life in danger more by going places if I really didn't have to go nowhere. Um, and like I said, that was one huge mistake that I feel like I made on my end, and I'm going to touch more on that. But that's another thing that you deal with when you bring a baby home for the first time. And I've actually have heard several females saying that they've experienced that same thing, that a lot of females hadn't taken their baby out until it was about six months, eight months, 10 months was the first time they take their, had taken their baby out riding somewhere. And I just, yeah, I, I kind of felt a little bit better, but then again, I don't feel better about it because I kind of screwed myself over. I kind of screwed him over in a sense because now, he absolutely hates car rides. When I say hate car rides, he hates car rides. Like, he now recently he's been getting a little bit more comfortable with car rides. Um, but like at night, we have to work with him now, like riding in the car at night. Like he he hates riding at night. Yeah, papa, mommy talking about you. He <laughs> mommy talking about you. He hates riding in the car. Now I feel like it's mostly my fault because, like I said. Like I said, like if it was for the doctor's office, my appointment or something like that, then we would take him out. But anything else, I would be like, no, it's like, but if we don't have to go, nah. And uh, another thing, actually, I want to point out another thing that I, a reason why I did not want to take him out is because we had like COVID. There was a lot of COVID cases here in Texas at that time. And 
I did not want to risk my son getting sick or me getting sick and then I lose my son because of COVID. Because I decided to make a selfish decision to leave the house and go places and do this and do that. Prioritize everything else over my son. So that's another thing. Um, but yeah, I, I I don't regret the decision I made, although I do kind of have a small regret about not taking him out more. Just being in the car, like in general riding, like even if I'm back there with him, it's the same thing. Like he's still gonna cry. It doesn't matter. It happened last night when we went to go find him some winter clothes. Like we tried to find him some like thicker jackets last night and on the way there, he was fine, perfectly fine. It was daytime. On the way back, however, it was nighttime. It was starting to get dark and he just was not having it. He was like, nope. I even got in the back seat with him and he still was like, crying extremely bad and I was I told my husband I was like I can't take it like I'm like I'm getting a headache like I can't take it for one I hate hearing him like he cried so hard like to the point where it just sounded like he was getting tortured and I was like oh my god like what is going on like you know like what can I do I've tried I've tried the toy method I've tried getting different toys um I feel like it's just at night he's not able to see out the window or he's not able to see just in general in the car at night. I do have his little like mirror light that he has on the back of the seat that he looks at um, on because he face the rear facing seat. So I have a mirror there where we can see him when we're in the front. But that that light was not good enough. Um, I don't know if it was because he was already like crying really bad or what the case may be but he he wasn't feeling it and normally he loves watching miss rachel shout out to miss rachel because that woman my baby loved miss rachel <laughs> but yeah uh, he he absolutely despised right in the car i would say more so at night now oh bubba you still sleeping But yeah, he absolutely despises riding in the car, especially at night. Um, now, another thing is like changes with the body in general. So I didn't experience really huge changes with my body. Like I pretty much bounced back after pregnancy. But however, um, us females, we do experience changes, whether that's small changes or big changes. I did not have any like stretch, like stretch marks and stuff on my stomach and stuff like that. I didn't experience that. My stomach pretty much went back down. Like the only thing I do have on my stomach is like the little, cause they did have the, it's these portable um, monitors that they put on your stomach when you're going through labor to track your contractions. They also had the portable ones where it's like a Bluetooth connector and you can move around freely however you want. You don't have to have a machine attached to you. So I did try that and. It has stickies and like now I circle marks like on my stomach around my belly button. But um, they're starting to like clear up. Um, I feel like just putting bio oil on it more would help it um, completely clear up because it's it's cleared up from what it was. It literally had my skin looking like it was like like a rash in a sense. The changes that I've noticed with my body is like. Of course, like, I, I've gained weight, but after my pregnancy, like, I actually went down, um, because I actually weighed, like, 143 before I, like, got pregnant, and then after giving birth, I, I was at, like, now I'm at, like, 150, 149, fluctuating between 148 and 150 right now, so, and I'm 5'3", so... It's not bad, and my weight is pretty much proportionate. I just, um, I just want abs, you know? Like, of course, I have my, like, a little, a little tummy, but, <laughs> a little tummy. But I want abs, so that's what, um, I'm currently working on. We'll talk more about that later, but I'm currently working on that. <laughs> what else? What you want to tell them? What you want to tell them? What did you experience? Don't nobody ever talk about what the baby experienced. The baby experienced so many different changes coming from inside of the womb to now being outside of the womb and 
dealing with the world. So much confusion, huh? Yeah, so much confusion. I know. But yeah, so that's that. Um, I think that's pretty much it, guys. Like, I just feel like a lot of people should talk more about postpartum anxiety and depression more than what they do. And not only that, but like bringing awareness to what you really experience and not just sugarcoat it. Like, a lot of people sugarcoat it. Like, they make it seem like, oh yeah, postpartum depression and anxiety. Okay, like, what do you mean? You know, like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna feel down. No, you're not just gonna feel down. Like, I literally have mom guilt. Like, I'm not doing enough for him or like, I'm slacking or like, am I, you know, am I, am I providing for him like I should, like as a mother should. When I say providing, of course he gets everything, everything he needs. And I felt I wasn't producing enough milk through my breasts. So, I felt like my son, like I was failing my son. And that's where that mom guilt came into play when it came to postpartum depression and anxiety. Like, I felt like I just wasn't giving him what he needed. Like, I wasn't being good enough for him. And that's, that's, that wasn't a good feeling to feel. I would break down all the time and just cry. Like, just boo-hoo and cry because I was like, how can I feed him? And this was during the time that the shortage with the formula was going on. And my son has a sensitive stomach and he can only accept like certain types of milk. Cause a lot of other milks was making him puke up really bad. I felt worthless in a sense, like dang, like I can't even feed, I can't provide food for my son. And that's a really bad feeling to feel as a mother, as a parent in general, to not be able to, to provide for your son, whether it's something big or something small. Even though I'm pretty sure he probably was getting enough milk, but because I, when I would pump, I wouldn't get a lot of milk when I would pump. However, when he would be drinking, he would sound like he's sucking in a lot. Like, I could literally hear him drinking, but I'm like, when I pump, nothing's really coming out. And it would barely be an ounce. When I say barely nothing, barely an ounce coming out. Like, barely an ounce. And I would be researching and looking up stuff and what can I take and buying all this stuff to try to help with breast milk. Don't waste your money. Just stay hydrated and try to be as stress-free as possible. Um, I would ask my cousin, because she has two girls. I would ask her, like, you know, and she breastfed. Um, I asked her, like, hey, you know, what can I do to, to produce enough breast milk? And she was just like, you know, like, stay hydrated, try to stay calm, don't stress out about stuff. Be forgiving of yourself, because those hormones is what play a role in your breast milk produ production. So, it's okay, Papa. So, that's all it comes down to when it comes to, you know, Dealing with your breast milk and mom guilt and feeling like you're not good enough because you feel like you can't produce enough milk. And you possibly will be producing enough milk. You just don't, you don't physically see it because you don't see what's going in your baby's mouth. mothers don't talk about is how they end up listening to other people when they tell them how to love on their child you love on your child how you want to love on your child okay don't let nobody tell you not to love on your child a certain way or oh you're holding him too much or this and that you hold if you want to hold your child you hold your child and that stamp is sealed by me okay so you love on your child because at the end of the day, your child's not going to be in your arm 24-7. When they grow up, when they turn four, three, four, five, five years old, they're going to be running around. You're not going to be able to really hold them. Like, for instance, right now, like, look at them. Not so much worried about being killed. You get, do you get what I'm saying? Like, and I hold him. All, every chance I get, I'm picking him up and I'm holding him. I'm embracing the moment because why? I'm not going to get this all the time. I'm not going to get this in two, three, four years. 
I'm not gonna be able to just pick him up and hold on him and love on him and stuff because he's gonna be wanting to run around and get into everything and you know be a kid he's gonna want to be a kid and, and I'm gonna allow him to do that but let me embrace the moment as a mother while I have the chance you get you get what I'm saying you get what I'm putting down so yeah like I just I just try to enjoy the moments but like, like I was saying don't let nobody tell you not loving your kid okay I experience that a lot like where people be like put him down and you're gonna spoil him by holding him you're gonna spoil him by like he is not milk he's not milk how the hell I'm gonna spoil him he ain't milk and I disclaimer I'm not saying anyone who don't you know who don't believe in not holding their kids stuff is a bad parent I'm not saying that everybody to each his own to each his own everybody raise their kids how they want to raise their kids you get what i'm saying everybody love on their kids how they want to love on the kids how they feel like every kid is different okay just because your kid is however don't mean my kid gonna be the same as your kid two different kids two different personalities two different kids we're all unique in our own way i just wish that more people would understand and understand parents when it comes to loving on their kids don't ever tell a parent not to love on their kid or not to hold their kid. Because if I was the parent who didn't hold my kid or didn't love on my kid, then I would be considered an unfit mother, correct? Okay, I'm back. So, like I was saying, don't ever let nobody tell you how to love your child. Um, I almost fell victim to that. And I realized that how I was raised versus how I plan to raise my son is two totally different ways. And I have a real good reason for that. So, not saying that my parents did not do a good job. They did a, a wonderful job. My parents did a, an amazing job, okay? But I just realized that there's certain numbness that I have, like when it comes to emotions and stuff like that, or handling certain situations because of the way I was raised in certain situations. So, I just want to say... My, my parents did a great job. It's just that I want my son to be better than me. Just like anybody would want their child to be better than them. Anybody would want their child to, you know, turn out way better than how they were. I'm pretty sure my parents wanted the same thing for me to turn out better than them. And their parents, the same thing for them. So we all live and we learn. Each person who are a parent learns as they go. So. The way I'm learning, the way I'm handling things, let me handle and learn it the way I handle and learn it. And that's just how everybody should see it when somebody's a parent. Unless you see me putting my child in danger or harming my child, then don't worry. Don't worry. Like, don't worry about, you know, don't dwell so much on the stuff that don't matter. You get what I'm saying? Don't dwell so much on that because then you can bring somebody down. You, you say something negative or say something to deter them from loving their kid or deter them from the way that they love their kid. For instance, my son, love language may be touch, kisses, hugs, massaging his leg, massaging his feet, right? But your child love language may be no, just tell me you love me. That's it. I don't need you touching me. Just tell me you love me. All right, you get it? Like, every kid is different, so don't ever tell someone how to love their kid. I almost feel a victim of allowing someone to determine how I love my son. And at the end of the day, it's my choice on how I love my son. I'm the one who's with him 24-7, so I know what helps him. What helps him get through the day? What helps him, you know, deal with his emotions? I know that. Not the next person because they're not with him 24-7. And just because that may have worked with their kids don't mean it's going to work with mine. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? But let's end this off on a happy note. I try to embrace these moments. Like, the moments that I do have with my, my son, those moments that you don't get forever. Holding him, for instance. Feeding him. Loving on him. Playing with him. I really um, enjoy those moments and I, I hate that they're going to come to an end one day. But in the meantime, in between time, we're going to enjoy each other, huh, Papa? Yes, sir.
Yes, sir. We're going to enjoy each other, Papa. Guys, with that being said, until next time. Laters. Say laters, Papa. <laughs> He's busy. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment what videos you would like to see. Stay tuned. Until next time.